Man, I was in Nashville this weekend. Uh, for shows or just looking around? Just looking around. And thoughts? Great city. Great. We saw something we love. There's only a few places where if you're going to leave California, it's Nevada, mm-hmm. Arizona, Texas, and Nashville. Outside that, you're really... Especially for what we're doing. Um, that's why I'm saying. Yeah, if, yeah, if you're in the business, the biz, yeah. those are really the only... Right. Because, and you want to save money. Because I don't want to go to New York. Can't go to New York. No. I cannot. Could you do one of those winners? Oh, absolutely not. Me I'm, neither. I'm from dude. Denver, dude. I'm I can't do a... Oh, oh, God, what I couldn't are we talking do it. about? No, I couldn't do it. A Boston winner? No, man. A Denver winner? And you know what's funny is people always say, but you're from Massachusetts. And I'm like, yeah, it was fucking cold when I lived there too. Yeah, I learned my lesson. That's why I'm I here. I never want to deal with that again. Waking up in the morning, scraping That's out my window was- <laughs> Of the car? The worst start to a morning. Ever. Do you know what we used to do as kids though? Because everybody would let their car run in the morning. We would go out, uh, this dude, this kid that I uh, uh, grew up around, and we would get in people's cars and move them. So if you're, you were warming up your car in your driveway, you down we the would block. get it, we would move it and switch it with your neighbor's car. So you'd come out Hilarious. and there would be a car warming up in your driveway, it just wasn't yours. Hilarious, but the kids in my neighborhood would just steal the car. <laughs> so, because I, I remember there was like, uh, I think Pioneer made it where you could click a button because so, it'd be freezing like a blizzard. Yeah. And you'd be in the house, you could just start your car. So when the time you got in, everything was defrosted, is warm, which it, you'd take like half an hour to warm up, but you could just press a button. Well, that word got around town, then people were just jacking cars. You know, it was the worst way to wake up, dude. The, the scraping the windshield. Ah, I remember the. I remember vividly the last time I scraped the windshield. I said to my dad, I put it down, and I said, "Hey, I'm never doing that again." The worst. And he said, "I'm, I'm, I'm going to be living in cold weather for a long time." I go, "Yeah, but I'm, I'm out, I'll man. never be back." It's not sports aren't fun. Sledding's all right. Skiing, snowboarding, overrated. Tell me how much it sucks to be walking in your kicks. And to step in one of those slush puddles, you ah. didn't know it was fuck you. Game over, dude. No. I like the fashion in winter, like coats, but if it's too big, then you got to take it off. You're sweaty inside. The other, the other thing is, you know how you can tell it's too cold? Here's how, here's how I can tell you right now I'm never living in your city. If I don't know my nose is running until I taste it, oh, dude. it's too fucking cold. Yeah, it's just cold. too numb. It's, if, it's just numb. If it rolls down, you're like, oh, dude. Uh, so, but you guys went to Nashville and you loved it? Went to Nashville, man. We really, really loved it. And, um, you know, the truth is, and I'm sure you're going through this also. Did you ever think you were going to leave LA? Never. So it's, that's what it is for me when, for me, it's not, I'm not nervous starting there. And I'm, I actually, that newness excites me. Me too. It gets my creative juices going. But as life wise, as a person, I, I just always saw myself me here. Me too. Do you know? And it so gives that's me the, the worst thing. anxiety. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I'm also worried about. And it's one of the current events. Is Jerry Seinfeld was talking about New York because this 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 blogger wrote how New York's dead, and Jerry goes in on him. And I stand by everything Jerry said. And he talks about how you know there's a creativeness and there's an energy with yeah. New York and L.A. and Tokyo and London. And I'm worried that that creativeness and that energy might be lost if you go. You know, like I was talking to Tim Dillon about moving to Austin. I'm like, dude, let's go out there. We can start a show, or the podcast studios and stuff. And he goes, maybe. He goes, my, my worry is that it feels like I'm actually moving into retirement. Mm-hmm. He goes, it feels a little bit like retirement if, if we move out there, which I understand. A hundred percent. I, you know, one of the reasons that like when our kid, my kids, we were empty nesters and we were still stuck out in Encino. I said to Beth, I'm like, what the fuck? We got to get out down into the energy. Because I'm becoming complacent out here. I'm yeah. just I'm just sitting in my house. I know. I'm just sitting here. Like, where is the? You're the first person, and I and I'm sure other people feel this way. But you're the first person to have put it the same way I've been putting putting it, which is that energy that you can't see it, but you feel it. You feel it there, as soon as you touch down in LA, you can feel it. Yeah, you're ready. And so, I will say that it's scary, right? That's the thing that scares me the most. Did you feel it in Nashville though? There's a bit of a buzz in Nashville, but so we're not going to move out to Franklin or any of those places out there, which is outside the city, which is where families are. Beth and I are. We're not going to be downtown, and I don't want to say exactly where we're going to be, but we're going to be in the mix a little bit because that's what we want. We want that energy. We want to be where people are walking around. We want to be where someone can walk to get their shit their yeah. groceries where their people just moving all the time I know. 
You know what I mean? See, uh, what I want, well, I kind of have it here where I live far from the city. So my home life, it's safe. There's yards, there's kids can play, there's wide open areas. But then I drive in into the en yeah. energy and the, the vibe of a big city and then I can get out. Because I don't want my family living in the energy. I'm I'm with you that, man. But I, my kids are all... I know, you're good. Grown. So that's now, the thing. Theo, Theo's going to Nashville just for the month of September, just to feel it out. And he's just waiting to see what everyone do does. What do you feel like for you... Is that your biggest fear is what will happen creatively? And outside of that, you're not scared? Like, you're good with the... All of it scares me. Yeah. All of it scares me. Yeah, I think... You know, it's like the, you know, the band's breaking up, man. By band, I mean all, all of us. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, well, freaking Joey's always, already in New Jersey. I yeah. sent him a text this morning. Joey's in New Jersey. Um, you know, other guys are, aren't working for other reasons, right. which we won't get into. Rogan is in Texas. Uh, Do you, you just, feel you know, like, though? It, to me, it's just like... Uh, you know, one of the things that keep, keeps me here in LA is like my friends, my get that. And even if we might have uh, saw each other all the time, but we'd we'd work with each other, yeah. we'd see each other at the store, or where, the improv or wherever. It's just like now that that's kind of gone. It's like I don't know, man. Here's here's the thing that I'm excited about because I am the type of person though, where something new and scary excites me. Me too. And I am the type of person that needs that every now and then. I need to be like, I don't know, let's not open the shoot for a while. Let's see what the fuck happens. Me too. I do better when I'm like, God, I need to figure this out. Me too. It always works out better for me. Me too. When I'm like, oh, fuck. When I'm a little scared, I'm like, I don't know, man. Then I dial down, because right now, it's, you know, my stuff in LA is pretty set. Like, I know, you know, obviously there's shenanigans of firing the kid, right. you know, but outside that, everything's pretty, I, my, I have a schedule. And it's like there's not too much unknown. Uh, here's the one thing I will say that I'm excited about. And for you guys who are moving to Austin also. So comedy in LA got as good as it could possibly get. Probably like the best ever. Without a doubt, man. If you, if you combine the talent that was here, like the amount of... When I, when I would go on the road, I'm sure you too, and you would look at who was at the club before you and who's after you. Always do. You're just like killer, killer, killer. Always do. Yeah. Killer, killer, killer. Uh, every club, I'm like, well, you guys got three months of just... Monsters. Heat. Yeah. Right? So what was happening here was bound to... We, uh, we all talked about it. I'm sure you did. When's the bubble going to burst? When the bubble... When, right? I think what's exciting is... So it got as good as it got. And now let's see... What's next? Yeah, it's almost like... You I know, don't think it's here, though. I don't either. Not right now. I don't either. I, I think some of the smaller places... I don't. I don't I don't think so either. I don't know... Look, when... when um, if you look at the Comedy Store, and we both love the Comedy Store, and the Comedy Store man, Mitzi passed me. I worked the door at the Comedy Store. I didn't know you were a door guy. I worked the door at the Comedy Store. What? Man. Yeah, dude. Mitzi you passed... Were, door, who, were you a door guy with anyone else that made it? Because uh, for every door guy that's made it, there's way more that didn't. Yes. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I was a door guy. Like, <laughs> but you're also a bouncer at a nightclub. Yeah. Like, dude, just because I mean, you're a door guy doesn't give you any credit into the. Like, you know what Missy said to me the first time she catched me off coming off stage and she gave me the. You got the bony finger. That sounds dirty, but it is. Yeah. But she's calling you over. And uh, I sat down next to her and she said, um, You were very funny. And I said, thank you. And she goes, and you're so handsome, like a young Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well. And I was like, oh, 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 oh okay. all right. Yes. It's a weird I, reference. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but going back to Nashville, like I think whether it's Nashville, Texas, Phoenix, Vegas, it's different too. If this was, you know, in the 90s or 80s, like when you're gone, it, you're fucking gone. Mm -hmm. Now it's like with. Connected. Inter internet connect podcast social media it's like you're still connected you know a hundred percent like you're not just off the map and if you like okay. you can still have your boys on your show they can fly there they can zoom they like it's Easy. not like just josh is gone you know we're never gonna care from you like you can still be in the same <clears throat> orbit you had to be in la or new york before and now that's just not the case it's just not the case and that's what makes it less scary. Mm -hmm. It makes it like, okay, this is kind of like, well, look, we're not, we're not pioneers. We're not going into cities that don't have buildings and shit. No, you know what I mean? No, no. But 
we are going into a place that doesn't exactly have what we do. So there is a huge unknown. But at the end of the day, how many of the people who listen to this show are in Los Angeles? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. A fraction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so if I think about the money that I actually make because I'm here. Agree. There's more pros than cons, especially the way this the especially the way this state's headed. Dude, I would if I'm you with two young kids, I would love to raise them somewhere. No, no, no offense to the pa- other parents where you live in Richie Ridgeville, but I think I loved my kids growing up with a little diversity and a little roughness. Not no. rough like danger, but like yes. Do you agree. know what I mean? Grit, yeah, with a little bit. Agree. Because like, dude, even even here, we went on a tour of other schools that he'd go to from you know kindergarten through sixth grade, and we're going around the schools. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. It, are, Jesus Christ! What do you looks you, like a goddamn Apple building? It's like there, there's gonna be no obstacles. There's just how many benefits did you get out of growing up poor? Uh, but but even but and not only that, but growing up around so many different people, yeah, like, dude. Figure, navigate my way through. All right, this get this kid's super hostile. This kid's this. Like you don't want it all to be a smooth ride. As no. much as I don't want him to deal with turmoil, it's like you kind of got to, man. I think, and also 100%. if you look at the public schools, especially that Lake Travis in certain public schools in Austin, those public school systems, some of the best in the nation because of Barbara Bush, who was a former teacher, put all this funding into the schools. So the schools are through the fucking roof. Like there's something yeah, with man. that that I dig. I And I am a, I, I'm a firm believer in public schools, man. Like I'm In a, LA, I'm not? Because no, I, I do I want my kid to survive. Yep. Like there is, you know, yep. you want him to have a bit of a rough time, but you also want him to stay alive. You, But you, yes. But yeah. you want to go to a school and be like, you don't want him growing up and being like, everybody's rich and white. Correct. Because we know those people. I've never enjoyed any of them. Not a fucking one of them. Not a fucking one of them. So I think it's really important, man. I think you're doing the right thing, especially for schools. And by the way, you know what's going to be here in five years? California. That's what I saw my father-in-law yesterday because he, he's going to retire. And he's going to come with us. Yeah. And you know they don't tax us 401k out there, stuff like that. And... Uh, you know, I was like, I just have, I get horrible anxiety when I think about, like, I love my house, picture, picking all the stuff up and leaving the kids and stuff like that. And he goes, Brennan, at the end of the day, let's say worst case scenario, you go out there and you hate it, which you're not, but let's say you fucking hate it. LA's still here, man. You know, it's come back a year or two later. Like, it's not for, you're not going to another country. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you just come back. And, dude, you'll come back with a renewed, uh, you yeah. know? It, 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 but I, my thing is, I'm not gonna just move to uh, like like Travis and just be gone forever. Right. Like I'm still gonna have to fly back probably weekly to start to LA. Me you too. Know, commute. I I mean, I already I told Beth I'm like I'm probably gonna have to fly back. Because but all your all your kids are gonna still be here, right? My kids are here. My brothers are all here. All three of my brothers live here. Um, you know, my parents live in Reno. And I but I told my parents, I said if if I was a like my parents are in their 80s. So they're t- taking zero risk, and I don't blame them. They're like, hey, we don't, they don't want to travel. They don't want to travel. My dad hasn't left his house since. Yeah, my dad too. CNN ran one article. Look, my dad's my dad and mom are both over eighty. So as healthy, and my dad goes, <clears throat> go, he does golf every day. Does he have your genetics? My dad has had a six pack at sixty five yeah, years old. Your dad's straight. Yeah, he's fine. He's he's good. This dude. But they don't want to leave. They don't want to take a chance. But of getting, I, get, I get that. I totally you know? get it. So he told my mom and dad both were like, look, if you go to Nashville and you're worried about not seeing us, you're not going to see us till spring anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Dude, my dad, my, I told my dad, I'm like, you gotta, I sent him a picture of Boston. He's like, Jesus Christ, he's getting big. I sent him a video of Tiger singing because Tiger loves the music right now. So I sent him a video of that. What's he singing? Uh, meet me in the middle. Yeah, yeah, he loves, yeah. yeah. He loves Drake. He loves Drake. <laughs> All right, but so I saw my dad a bit, and he's like, "God, I miss him." He's like, "We're gonna come out there." I'm like, "Oh yeah, the air, the flights are cheap. I'll book your ticket." He's like, "Chill, nobody's flying. Yeah. We'll drive out there." I'm like, God damn, from dude. Colorado? Yeah, he's like, "We'll just drive nonstop." Is he just gonna? I don't know, go? dude. We used to go on road trips as a kid, but that's he's like, "We're not dealing with COVID at all." I'm like, all right, when, when I get off stage at the Laugh Factory. <laughs> Right away, you go, bro, I figure out what you look like. I'm like, what? This is front of a bunch of other comics. I'm like, what? You're like, you look like a Rottweiler. We got a shit together. Oh, you do, bro. Yeah. 
<laughs> Come on, man. I'm just saying, dude. Grab that mic, son. You do. Oh, yeah. <laughs>